I just wanted to do a video today because I have been working in my art journal and some of the things that I do, it requires me to have a pocket for like things like play programs um, and you know I don't want to just stick that to the page because you know that's not very fun to look at so I decided to sew two of my pages together to make a pocket which is really cool I think it turned out really pretty and then we went to another play and I did it again except this time I used beads that kind of matched uh, the play the program that we went to so I thought that would be a great idea to do an art journal and have you know a sewn pocket in each signature so that's my art journal so I've been working on some other ones. Here's a green one and a purple. Purple's my favorite. I don't know if y'all figured that out yet or not. But this purple one, I just uh, sewed um, all three of the sig center signatures and then I uh, put beads on two of them. And two of the pockets have a magnet closure pocket. So I thought I would show you guys how, to, how I did that, how I did this pocket and how I... Um, Sew the beads on there. And this green one, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's got two different color uh, beads um, sewn on each one of the, the signatures. And this one too has uh, two magnet envelope looking closures. Now I did these covers in a previous video where I did um, the smash a year or smash a half a year covers, but I was watching my videos even though I edited them I was watching them and I got tickled at myself because I don't finish my sentences. I don't call things the right things. Um, so I thought what I would do is do another set of covers. Uh, maybe fast forward through it so you don't have to sit there and watch every little thing for 20 minutes. But um, just so you can see the process of me making one of these uh, art journals with the stitch binding. And also, I wanted to kind of show you all how I um, got, get the size of my book, the page sizes, um, where that all comes about. Um, it's not random. It may seem like it's random, but it's really not. So these two are the same size. These are actually both using um, Cheerio boxes, the skinnier Cheerio box. Um, so these three are all going to be the same size. So um, let's get started. So first thing, before I even cut my box down, which I've already done that, so y'all don't have to sit there and watch me do that. Uh, before I even cut, I figure out what paper I want to use, and this is 140 pound watercolor paper. So the way I determine my size is I go through all the different sizes that I have, and if you, I like to tear my pages. So if you, you know, score this in half and tear it, that leaves you with seven and a half by 11. And then if you score it half again, that leaves you seven and a half. And when you fold it, it'd be five and a half. So that's where I determined my size for my book this time. So I have already cut my cereal box down to the size that I wanted, which ends up being five and three fourths wide by eight inches tall. And so I put the quarter of an inch on the top and the bottom for the, for the beads so the beads um, don't get in the way when you're putting your um, journals up. Okay, so the same thing. I'm going to take some packaging material. Same thing I did in my other video. Where's my... And I'm going to use, um, which I crinkled it up more because it was already crinkled. So, And then I'm going to use uh, the PVA glue. I like this glue. It dries really well. It holds really well. It also lets the book still be a little bit um, pliable, which I like. And it, it just it feels nice. And I'm going to use this, the Tim Holtz tissue paper again. Um, and it too, if you can ever get your hands on some of that, it's so nice feeling. It just feels good in your hands, if that makes any sense.
Alright. Alright, so that's all good and covered. I think I got a little bit of an air bubble there, so I'm gonna try to smoosh it out. And so you can still see the, the Cheerios. I don't know if you can see that, but you can still see a little bit of the design. But again, it's not gonna matter because we're gonna paint it and put the tissue, the tissue uh, paper over top of it. Okay. And that glue, this glue, is what I'm using. You can get it at an art store. I haven't really seen it anywhere else. I've also got this glue, which is PVA glue too, but I'm almost out of it, so I had to open another one. All right, so I'm going to... Where's my beads? I decided I want to make a book that would match these beads right here. And they're kind of um, a blue. It's really pretty, like a ocean blue or a... Oh, I don't know. It might even be like a blue-green a little bit. I don't know. But they're really, really pretty. So I wanted to, to match the book to this. So I've already figured that out. I'm going to use some gesso. This is just cheap gesso because I use a lot of it to mix. You can get this at, I think I got this at Walmart. But gesso. And I'm going to use some uh, acrylic artist quality titanium white paint and the only reason I'm using this too is because I think I've got a hole somewhere and I don't want it to go bad so I'm going to go ahead and use it and then I'm going to use this uh, uh, acrylic heavy bodied you know I cannot even pronounce this uh, <laughs> I don't know maybe I'll just hold it up maybe if you can read it it's a really odd but it's a blue color with like a green shade of the blue color but, so I'm going to mix this together real quick. Find a brush. I'm also going to add some medium to it because that way, since it's going to be kind of like a glue, uh, it'll, it, it'll um, last a little bit better than the paint just holding it. I might not need any of this white. Let me try it without it first. But I need to hunt down my my medium here. Oh, hang on. This is golden soft gel matte medium. So I'm going to add some of this in here. It'll also help my paint go a little further. Because I'm going to need quite a bit of it. Alrighty, there's no rhyme or reason. I just plop a big old glob. So once that, see I got paint all over me, I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. You get that on there and then you take the tissue wrap or whatever. You don't have to use tissue wrap. I just like the way it feels and I like the script. I just think it makes a really pretty cover. And then you can smooth it down. You can kind of tell where there's air bubbles and where there's not. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of squish it a little bit just to give it some wrinkles. So when we put that white on there, that white will have some place to sink into the crevices and give it a little bit more, you know, character and whatnot. Okay. So then you just flip her over. Oops. Let me wipe this paint up a little bit so I don't get it all over the place.
I am going to, uh, this is a little bit different than the other one, I am going to paint where the creases are for the covers because I'm going to line it with watercolor paper. I've cut off, you know, a piece for the spine and two pieces for each side um, just because this is an art journal and I wanted to make sure that it could be used. You know, all the little parts could be used as an art journal. Okay. Let's see. Oops, it's probably not a good place. Let me get my water here. All right, I'm going to let that dry and then, or I'm going to dry it and then um, we'll come back and I'll continue on. Okay, we're back and um, it's all nice and dry. So I'm going to flip it over and start doing that technique with the white paint. Like I should. See how pliable it is? I mean, the paint obviously is still very, 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 very wet underneath there. But I think it also helps it, when it dries, it makes it, I don't know, more pliable than it would if you, you know, let it get really super hard and then start manipulating it. It also depends on what you use to cover your, your uh, recycled cereal box or whatever box you happen to be using. If, if it's like that real thick craft shipping paper, it's going to be much more rigid. And if it's the thinner craft shipping paper, it'll be soft like this. And the paper that I use, that really thin brown packing or wrapping paper, um, it's, gonna be, it's still going to be flexible. And I think with an art journal, I think it's important to have that flexibility so that you can flatten it out and manipulate it and do it. You know, that's what art journals are for, you know, to experiment and to play and to have that flexibility of not being on a canvas or a really nice piece of watercolor paper or whatever medium you, you work on. So, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some gesso. Here's one, another one of my little tips too, is every time I buy something that's in plastic, like these, I don't even know what was in here now, but I save them because they can be used as palettes for, that is way too much gesso. So, <laughs> have to find something to do with that too. And then you also want a baby wipe, a clean baby wipe. So we, I did this on the other video too. So I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to do all of the edges. Okay, so flip it over. Alright, I have pre-cut somewhere. I have pre-cut these pieces to save time. Here they are. So what I did was I cut a spine. This is out of watercolor paper, the same paper we're going to use to put inside the book. And then a front and back. So I'm going to attach this with the same glue because I want it to be, since it's probably going to be wet media is going to be used on there, I want to make sure that it stays on there. But this kind of is hard. It's harder than just gluing it down, taping it down, double sided tape. Um, it takes a little bit more patience which sometimes I don't have enough of, but basically I'm just going to add it to my piece and I'm going to add a little bit down there in the center. The reason I did that is because for some reason I, I think it tacks a little bit better if this glue here down at the bottom is here and it gets a little, little tiny bit tacky. I think it does a little bit better. So then I'm going to add 
or spread out rather my glue make sure you get all the edges so there we go it's all good and almost all good and glued and then you just kind of want to eyeball it. I've kind of cut it to where it's a quarter of an inch, top, bottom. And almost straight up to the line there on the sides, to the crease there. I guess I could give you the measurements of this. They are, all three pieces are seven and a half tall. This piece is a, one and a quarter inches wide. And these are five and three eighths inches wide. So then, once you get it on there, let it sit for a second. Then you may want to take something to smoosh it down, get all the edges. Try not to get glue on the paper. This piece doesn't matter because it's going to be the pages are going to be sewn on top of it. So it doesn't matter if glue gets on this piece, but yeah, that wasn't so bad. This is a Teflon bone folder. I love this thing. I don't. I don't know. It's just. It's good. It feels good in the hand. It's like it got a good. Um, the other ones. I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but these they kind of sometimes hurt when you're when you're scoring and stuff because they've got sharp edges and it's good. You know, it's the same thing. This one just seems to be more comfortable. Plus, it's got this nice flat flat edge so that I can smoosh stuff down real good and tight. All right, so let's do the same. I'm going to probably fast forward now. Let's do the same to the to each cover. Another thing about this tool is it's got that long flat edge and just and nothing sticks to it. You just wipe it off, it's gone. It's wonderful. Okay. Oh, there's my front. So now we've got the front cover, or now we've got the, the covers done completely. Got them all lined and ready to go. So there's two two types of pages. There is just the regular page. There's several, in each signature, there's five signatures. There is several uh, regular pages. And then there's the pocket, which is the center uh, page and two pages in the signature. So it's stitched inside. Um, and then later, the, the, the outside edge is stitched. Then there's two more. And then the next signature has that envelope um, pocket with the magnet. So I'll show you how to make the pages first and then we'll do the envelope pocket. So what you're going to need is your scoreboard, a piece of 11 by, this particular size um, for this book is 11 by 15 and then it gets scored at seven and a half. Can you see seven and a half? Seven and a half. Flip it over, fold it, and I, like I said, I like to tear mine. Sometimes you got to get it going. But I like that edge. I don't know. It just, especially for art journals, I think it's really cool. All right. So then you take each piece, and then you at the eleven inch side, you score it at five and a half. Now this, this journal that I'm working on, there are three signatures that have three sheets, so one, two, and then another one. And then there are two signatures that have two sheets and the envelope that I was talking about. So there's part of that last signature. I've got all the other signatures made up. So 
same thing, same size sheet of paper, 11 by 15. So this, you want to score it at 5 and 3 eighths and 10 and 7 eighths. And then you want to fold up that, the, at the 5 and 3 eighths, you want to fold that up. And you want to get your trimmer, your paper trimmer. I think I called it a cutter or something in the last, I thought I'm just silly. Alright, so this, it needs to be the same height as the book, so seven and a half inches high. So we'll line it up to that seven and a half. And cut it. Oops. And cut it. So we need to keep, I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, so what we need to do now and the center point up here, which I believe it'd be three and three fourths on each side. And there's the center. We want to mark the center. And then in order to get that nice point like an envelope would have, I'm lining up the score line to the quarter of an inch mark on my uh, trimmer. And then I'm lining the center mark in the channel of where my blade goes. I'm just going to cut that off. Flip it over, do the same thing. Line up the score mark at the quarter of an inch mark. Put the point in the channel. And cut that. So then, I think I need my trimmer again. I just rounded these off with my scissors. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's an art journal. All right, now the tricky part is how to get that magnet. The way I do it is I put it here, one half of the magnet goes here, and then half of the magnet goes underneath here. So it's really hard to figure out how to line that up. So what I do and I'm sure there's a much better way to do this is I take a pencil and I guesstimate where my my magnets gonna be and then I flip it down and press onto the center part of my envelope page here and it didn't leave as enough, enough of a mark for me so I'm gonna do it again and just press okay you can barely see it or I can barely see it which means you can barely see it or you might not be able to see it at all. So then you want to do the same thing there, and then you want to press this part down and just rub. And it left me a mark, so and that's where I'm going to put the magnet. Okay. I'm using a basic gray magnet disc, small magnets. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason, these were at Tuesday morning, and I got them for 99 cents a pack, and they're normally like six bucks, so I grabbed a bunch. But they have a positive and a negative, so I'm going to put one over here. I think, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think the reason they were probably there is the, the paper backing is so hard to get off, and... I don't really understand why, but don't probably this is probably not the best way to do this. But I take my my um, craft knife. Okay, <laughs> it cut off on me, so I don't know where I stopped. But um, I got my paper backing off. It's the negative side of the magnet. I'm gonna take a little dab of glossy accents, and I'm gonna stick it right there whoop, on my pencil mark. Not to make a mess just like I did. You don't really want that oozing. Okay. So I got that part. I got the negative part there. And then the positive one you put on this side. Now I try at first time I did it, I took the sticky bag off and I put it there. Well it wouldn't stick. Well, <laughs> because I had it upside down. So for this one, you don't even have to take the sticker off. You just put the put the uh, glossy accents on there and put the part that doesn't have the sticker down onto that 
glossy accents or whatever type of glue you like to use for metal to paper I think this partic this particular glue you know holds it pretty well all right so then you gently want to fold it over and fold it over oh did you hear that it automatically grabbed onto it and if you were off just a hair it will move it where it needs to go they're really really strong magnets so now I'm just using some paper clips just to hold it in place for it to dry you probably I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not can you oh there you go can you see the magnets inside there so they're touching each other they're they're magnetized okay so that's how we make this okay so now we've got the envelopes prepared so two of them have the envelopes in the center this one's dry I can take it off and show you see how well this magnet holds on to there Oops. makes that noise so there's the magnet there's my marks <laughs> so when we go to sew it in I'm gonna have it done like this so that I can the flat doesn't get in the way more paper clips all right so I'm not gonna this one is still wet so I'm not gonna mess with that one for the moment but I am I have to poke holes now that's the next step I can find my pokey tool I called it a pokey thingy or whatever last time and it's a paper piercer is what it is all right here's my template and this one is just seven and a half inches tall and it's my template for three or five holes so we're going to do three holes so the way to do it is to put it in there line it up cloak cloak poke clear through all three um, pages so I don't know if you can see the holes there so we do all of our signatures this way poke th and if you if you don't want to make a template well that's fine too you can just take it and measure find the center so this is three three four so you would find a center you'd poke a hole at zero and then I think yeah and then an inch away from each end so it would be two and three fours and two and three fours but I'm not going to poke these holes yet because I'm waiting for that envelope to dry first before I mess with it so the way I'm going to sew these in here is going to be one without an envelope with an envelope without an envelope with an envelope and without an envelope so there'll be five signatures there'll be two with an envelope but every single one of the center signatures is going to be sewn together and have a side pocket so all right so those are ready so now we need to get our spine and our our book is still a little damp but that's okay All right, so the way I do this is I find, <coughs> excuse me, I find the center of my spine here, which is three and three fourths, and I make a light mark, and then I come down here, make another light mark. Actually, you can go ahead and mark it two and three fourths two and three fours two and three fours two and three fours then you want to draw a very light line from mark to mark this is the easiest way I, I think to get it evenly spaced um, signatures Oops, that one's a little crooked. Let's fix that. Okay, so then at each at each line, I know there's five signatures, so I'm gonna find the center again. And I'm gonna mark a nice dot here. 
I'm gonna come in um, about an eighth of an inch from the edge of that spine liner on each side so that's at three-fourths and then in the middle of that so that's one two that'd be three eighths I guess one two three so I'm going to do that in all three of these okay so they're all marked can you see those yep they're marked I'm going to take my pokey tool, paper piercer, and I'm going to go right in those marks and I'm just going to put, push, since it's still wet under there, it's, it's a little bit more difficult than it should be, but we're going with it, so when it's dry, it's not as hard to go through. You want to try to keep them in a straight line. Sometimes they get a little cattywonked and that's okay. Then you want to go back and erase your pencil marks. This is why you want to do it lightly because these in the middle here you'll be able to see those sections. Alright, so we're going to sew it now. I'm just going to use, you need a, a, a small needle, one that your beads will go over. Oh, well, no, technically I guess you don't because you're not going to need this needle until you sew the other parts, but I'm going to go ahead and use it for this part too. So you need a needle, and this is blue, almost matching, not 100% perfectly perfect, but blue, this is crochet thread. You can get the waxed stuff, um, you know, to make, you know, that they make professional books out of, and a lot of people use that. I just, I don't like it for some reason. So. I'm just going to use the crochet thread. It comes in all these pretty colors, and I just think it's great. Matches everything. And I'm probably not going to be able to. Matter of fact, I'm going to get a bigger needle so that I don't have to sit here and squint for 10 minutes. Okay. Oops. I got a really long piece of thread. Okay, so we're going to start with our first signature. We're going to go in the center hole. We're going to go in the center on the spine. Then we're going to leave a tail. Then we're going to come through the first or the top hole, or whichever top or bottom, whichever way you want to go. And then go through the top holes. And the signature. And this can take some practice. Because for some reason it doesn't want to go through all three. But just take one at a time and it'll work. There we go. So you want to make sure you don't lose that tail. So you're going to pull it tight on that end. It's probably too much of a tail. You're going all the way down to the bottom. Go through all three in the bottom hole. And then you want to come back through that center hole. And be careful not to grab or go through that thread that you've already got going through there. It can sometimes make it weak. And you want to go on the other side of that long. So one's on this side and one's on this side of this string right here. So you, you want to kind of pull tight and tie a knot. All you really need is a double knot. I usually do one more just because. And then I glue the knot. This is just some glue and seal that I put in a little, uh, I don't know what this is called, a little plastic bottle with a pointy uh, in just so I can get little bits of glue out at a time. And glue and seal is my favorite when I make books. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but that's what I always grab is the glue and seal. Okay, so there's the first signature. It's sewn in there. It's good, it's good and it's tight. And it's all, you can't really see the blue thread, so I guess it matched pretty, pretty good. 
So again, remember, this is going to be, I, my art journal, this is left like this open unless I, you know, close it. But this is, it's going to be a pocket here, so you're not going to see that. All right, so then the next one, let me make sure. Okay. This, the next one is the, the envelope. So I closed the flap shut, and this is the front of my book, so... I'm going to make sure that this flap, I guess you could do it the other way if you wanted to, but all right, same thing. In the center, in the center hole. Oops. Leave a tail. Top hole. I don't know how about that first one is the most frustrating to get your papers lined right back up. Go all the way to the end. The bottom hole. Pull it through. Don't lose your tail. And come back through that middle hole. Thought that was my hubby calling. Okay, so then you want to pull it tight again and tie it. Cut it off. Put a little bit of glue. got that signature sewn in. There's the spine. And there's the envelope. There's the magnet. Boop. So you got that one sewn in. Okay, so then the next one is just a plain without the envelope. Okay, so now we're going to sew in the third signature, which is just a plain with uh, no envelope. So I'm probably going to fast forward now because you've seen me do it plenty of times. Okay, so you can always leave it just like this. It's a nice art journal. It's, it's got plenty of pages. It's got room, plenty of room to make it thicker. You don't have to have these. Um, you can add, you know, thicker embellishments, mini mediums, um, all kinds of good stuff. So you can leave it just like this, which is great. And that's what that's where this one started from, just plain. Matter of fact, I haven't got back here yet, so there's just, you know, plain pages. There's no pockets. I only added the pockets, made the pockets when I needed them. So, I love this art journal. It's just awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do, how to do the uh, beaded edges. So, until the journal relaxes a little bit, I have to pin, I pin it. I have to, um use paper clips to kind of get the other pages out of the way while I do this. It's kind of frustrating, but all right, again, with the fancy pokey tool or paper a piercer or whatever you want to call it. Oops, I might want both of them. Grab the center to where the stitching is and then be very careful but you just want to start poking holes towards the edge all the way through both. The bottom you want to be just a little bit more careful than you would towards the top. 
doesn't matter. To me, it doesn't matter if they're straight, um, evenly spaced. All of that does not. It's an art journal. I like the way that it's kind of just organic and just free. It just doesn't have to be excruciatingly perfect. So you just poke holes all the way up the side. And stop when you get to the top. You don't want to go too close to the edge. So then you go down the other side. I find it's easier to go up. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, so now we got both uh, rows of holes punctured along each side. And I'm, I'm, I would normally go and poke all the holes for all the ones, but I'm going to show you how to stitch this using that same blue thread and the little, the little tiny needle this time so that the beads will go through. And Another one of these little trays. There's, there is not wet paint in there, I promise. So you want to thread your needle. And this really is no easy task because this is a tiny little hole. So I'm going to do my glue trick and see if I can't get it to be. A stiffer thread. What happens when you get, let's like, see, I got myself at some point a scratch. When you don't use like really thin threads, you know, they, they, they tend to want to, all the little tiny threads that makes up this one thread tend to want to not all go through the hole at the same time. Oh, look at that. Ta da! All right, I like to start at the bottom, at the bottom hoe, and then, oops, be careful not to get your string all knotted up. When you put too much string, when you get too much string out, that's what happens, usually, to me. All right, so then you want to knot it right here. From this extra piece. Off. All right. So then the next thing you do is you get a bead on your needle and then you come from the top and go in through the back and I like to hold it with my thumb although I just dropped it. You probably won't be able to see that because and then you don't want to pull it tight because you don't want it on top you want it on the side here like so. So, you know, you don't want to pull it really tight. Then you get another bead. Same thing, you put it through the hole. There we go, maybe you can see it. And hold the bead. And then push it over to the side. Another bead. Through the hole. And you push it over to the side. That way they have enough room to move around. You have enough room to put some bulkier things in your in your pockets. And it's just pretty. I think it's pretty. OK, 
Okay, this last one, same thing, put a bead in, hang it over to the side, and then I like to go back in the, round it, you know, go around the back up into the hole in the front. Do it one more time. Oops. This needle's so tiny. And then I like to come back up front again and I like to run my needle underneath those two threads that I just put in through there and pull it tight. Do it again. Pull it tight. And then one more time, except this time. I'm going to go and up, up and through the, the loop there to make a knot. And that's really all you need. A little bit of glue. Whoa. Trim it off. And then I'm just going to take these clips off to show you what it looks like on the bottom. And when it's when they're all full, when there's you know when they're all done, they all tend to lay the same way. But you can like, I'm not showing you very well, am I? <laughs> so there you go. That's what that's what it does. It just gives like a. It's being it's not being very cooperative, but you get you know the beaded edge. So see how loose it is, so they can move around really nicely. So that way when the book gets really full, it'll sit flush on top just like these do. They don't they don't move as much as they used to. So they sit still right there. Okay, so you do the you do the top, one minute. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And there's your pocket. Right there. Nice. And it's got room, plenty of room to add a whole bunch of stuff in there. So if you're doing an art journal page or you're smashing something like my art journal, I use it for everything. So I smash in it. I art, do art stuff techniques, new stuff, just whatever. Um, but sometimes you just need space to put something. So this is a perfect way to use the pages that you already have and make a pocket out of it. And you do the same thing with this envelope um, one as well. You just got to be a little bit more careful when you're poking the hose. The flat kind of gets in the way a little bit. So, but you do the same thing. You just poke the hose without poking yourself all the way down. So I'm going to do this and then I'll be back. Okay, I am back. I've got all of my beads on the top and the bottom. Each signature including the envelopes. Just the center of each one to provide with for some storage and stuff. So what I thought um, I would do is show you how I do these these closures. It's just a clip with a chain and an eyelet. And that's it. But it's a great closure when your book gets thicker. It just it just holds it together a little bit better. Like mine here, I've got all kinds of little things that I dangled. Some of my favorite little stuff that I make. You know, just different little things that's dangling on the side of mine. So I really like it, and it really, you know, holds it holds it good and tight. Not good and tight because it actually lets it breathe. But when it gets really fat, it's going to come in really handy. 
Okay. So what I do is on the back cover, I find the center. I don't go about maybe, I go maybe three-eighths of an inch in. Mark it. And then I use my uh, crocodile. We are memory keepers. I use the, the big hoe and punch it out. The reason we're using the big hole is because the eyelet that I'm using, I think is also We Are Memory Keepers, um, has the bigger hole in it. So you put that in the back so that it looks nice and neat from the back. And then the same tool, you just want to crimp it down. And there it is. It's, it's nice and secure on there. So then the next thing you want to do is get you some chain. I don't particularly like try to matchy matchy everything, so it's just whatever chain I have. But what's important is that it goes through this eyelet. So if it doesn't go through that eyelet, then maybe you should find another chain. All right, and here I go again with these jewelry tools. I'm just not a jewelry maker, so I feel I feel awkward. So you open up by twisting the end of this chain. And then, oops, you want to connect it to itself on one of the loops there. And close it back up by twisting. You can always add a little dab of glue there. So see now the chain is attached to the to the cover of the book. So then what I do next is I've got these these clips, these little binder clips. They are, uh, these are Tim Holtz, but I think uh, Hobby Lobby now has, uh, Paper Studio now has a, um, a clip that they make. So those are probably more readily available. So my chain's way too long, so I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. Kind of measure it a little bit. And I'm just going to open up one of these, maybe. Let's try it again. Nope, not that side. Goodness. There we go. If I can just get a hold of it. There we go. Of course, I could use two sets of pliers. All right, and then I made a little bead that matches the beads that I put in the book, and I just used a head pin. Stuck it on there, made a loop, and wrapped it around. So it's just basically just the dangle at the bottom. Put that on there before you close it back up. Okay. So then you take another um, jump ring, and you want to try to decide how. That what's great about this is this can be moved. You can change it to different. You know, it can be tighter or it can be looser. So I'm going to go about right here, I'm going to run it through one of these holes and then it also needs, the eyelet needs to be big enough to go through this hole in the clip. So if it doesn't go through that hole in the clip then it, you need to get a bigger, a bigger eyelet. What? Not eyelet, um, jump ring. Jeez. Now's when I need two sets of these. Here we go. Ugh. And you squeeze it tight. So then there's your there's your closure for your book. See, that was easy. Easy peasy. Uh, and other books uh, where I've used this, I've gessoed it and stained it and inked it and whatever. And it looks really You can also make a bunch more of the um, these little beads and dangle them along here or just add the stuff that you like. So with that one, See, it sits pretty nice. And this one is, is loose too. See how much room I left myself on that one? And then this one's a little bit tighter. But they all have like little matching um, beads. If I can get this one. Little matching beads on the end of it. So that's it for, for these three um, art journals. 
they're all going to be for sale at my shop at www.genevievedesigns uh, at etsy.com um, and try to make your own I mean they're not hard you can use whatever paper you want I mean you know they're not hard I say they're not hard but they you know it takes a little practice but use whatever paper you want do the beads don't do the beads um, have pockets have envelopes have both have neither have, you know just do whatever you want use whatever closure you want dangle whatever you want from the side um, but the point is to use the stuff that you have take stuff out of your recycling bin that you can um, you know use and it keeps it out of the landfill and it's pretty cool and I like it. Well, thanks for watching.